Welcome to the Midnight Writers Podcast, helping authors become better writers. Episode 10, Writing Short Stories for Anthologies. This is John. This is Lena. This is Amy. <laughs> and I'm Amity. And we, uh, today we have Amy's, this is her, her first time on the show. She's, uh, well, you're, you're part of our group, but uh, you're just not normally here for the podcasts. But Ben couldn't make it, so Amy was able to fill in. Um, so you want to introduce yourself real quick? So I'm Amy Kessler. I write under A.L. Kessler, and I write paranormal romance and urban fantasy. And I'm starting to dip my toe into a new adult a little bit. Awesome. And we have with us guest uh, Amity Green. Um, so what uh, what all have you written so far? Or well, my the genres that I write from primarily are horror and urban fantasy. And um, my urban urban fantasy stuff is actually leaning more toward new adult, just because my characters are getting older and doing older things. So. Um, I'm in anthologies, and I have one debut novel novel out, and I'm in the middle of writing the second um, book in that trilogy. Awesome. Yeah. What's your book about? It's about a girl named Tessa, and she's a college student in Austin, Texas, and she wins a scholarship to study abroad in, in London, and she's locked into a bookstore over there and changed into a gargoyle. So it's actually my first time writing shifter stuff, um, some people call her a wear gargoyle, which mm -hmm. you know, I guess it's perspective. She is that. She she changes back and forth, so it's fun. It's fun to explore that. Yeah, I was showing somebody your uh, your list of books on your website, and their comment was, "I've never seen anybody do gargoyles before. You always see werewolves and vampires, but yeah. never a gargoyle." Yeah, so. I've been partial to gargoyles since I was a kid, and I did get to go over to London and study abroad. So I was a complete nerd. Every gargoyle I saw, I got like tons of pictures of the gargoyle, and yeah, it was it was crazy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Okay. So today's uh, subject is uh, writing short stories for anthologies, and you have several short stories? I do. Uh, I do. How many do you have? Well, I think there are, um, in print still, there are eight or nine, but um, like you have had a couple that have gone out, out of print over time, so yeah. I love writing for anthologies. It's, I mean, and a lot of people love to read anthologies because they get a small bit, you know, a taste of different author styles and stuff. So I really enjoy those too. Cool. Uh, I just realized I didn't have my notes up. Anyway, <laughs> uh, delete. Um, so uh, how is writing an, uh, an, for an anthology different than uh, for a novel? Well, your, your, each word in a short story has to pack a faster punch. You don't have, you know, as much time to actually to, to spread out and, and do your thing, which kind of makes it better. I mean, each word has to pack a punch anyway, but you have to get the, the mission done in a shorter amount of time. Um, writing for anthologies as a whole, most of them that I have been invited to are themed in some way, so that's always fun. Um, and it's always just such a joy to find out, you know, who else is going to be in the table of of, of contents. Um, writing with other authors is a blast, and, and I really love it. Cool. Uh, do you have any uh, favorite authors that have shown up in any of your books? Oh, yeah, I do. Joe Lansdale, huge, huge favorite. Um, Jack Ketchum, Boyd Harris. Those are some of the, the ones that are in some of my favorite um horror anthologies and then locally i i'm really good friends with a bunch of local authors um kevin eikenberry and um hank snyder holly snyder she's a favorite um r michael um r michael burns is one of my all-time favorite short story authors and he's actually based locally but he works as a teacher in florida wow. comes for the summers cool now, to clarify, locally, Denver, mm -hmm. Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. I'm just now getting to know Denver authors, so I don't know a whole lot of them very well. A lot of people there. just bunch them both together, so yeah. I like yeah. to clarify. They get excited. <laughs> oh, local. Oh, Denver. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's <too> right. Far. <laughs> so, cool. So, do you find an anthology you want to write for and then write the story, or do you just create a story that you have in mind and then try to get it to an anthology? Which way do you 
prefer? You know, it really depends on if there's a theme, uh, a heavy theme for the anthology. Sometimes I'll look and see if I have a story idea that I can go ahead and complete to fill. But if it's something new, you know, and a new concept and I don't have anything like in the trunk or something like that, then then I'll go ahead and, and start, you know, coming up with an idea and a title and everything right then. But I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes if I have something that's, you know, just still on the board, then maybe I can go ahead and take that and morph it so it fits to the, to the theme. It just depends on what they have going on. Okay. Yeah. What kind of themes have you written for? Um, holiday themes. I, it, it's like everybody in their grandma's cow puts out a holiday <laughs> anthology. <laughs> um, so some of my favorites actually turned out to be to be holiday themed anthologies. The first one I ever did and my first um, short story publication was actually for a hacked up holiday massacre. And that's, um, I know it sounds like, whoa! <laughs> well, no, it's it's not actually, well, yeah, I guess some of the stories are, are pretty hacked up, you know, like as far as bloody and stuff like that, because it is horror. It is. And um, my short story, Sunshine Beamed, was picked up for that anthology. And I got the check for it. And I never even cashed the check. I still have the check. And it was just a major, major deal for me. That was a really great day when I got that acceptance. And that like created a little bit of a monster in me. After I got that one, I was like, I need more. (laughs) So how long does it take you to write a story from start to finish? Well, of course, it depends on the length. Like a short story for an, an anthology, typically, you know, 5,000 words or under, I think, is what I've done. Um, I can bang one of those out in probably about five or six hours, and then I begin my rewrites. Wow. I usually spend, uh, I usually write about 1,000 words a day when I'm writing a short story, so it takes me about a week to write it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just kind of want to get them done because I spend a lot of time on my rewrites. And, of course, self-editing. Oh, my goodness. You know, we, we put in a lot of time self-editing, too. So, yeah, if I can get it out there and just get a rough draft done, then I'll begin to, to really work it over. Now, it takes me longer to work it over than to write the rough draft. Have you ever had to scrap an entire product that you've written and start over? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I guess. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I, I just this week, uh, um, we're writing an anthology called uh, Domesticated Velociraptors. Is an anthology. <laughs> so, uh, and I've been working on this story, and finally this week, I'm like, you know what? This story's not working. I have to start over. <laughs> yeah, I have. And actually, um, my very first novel, Scrapped. It was incredible crap. (laughs) It was the worst. And then I have a couple short stories. You know, and when I say scrapped, I will never throw anything away. I won't. But I will definitely set it aside um, for when I've grown. (laughs) I I hoard my stories. Actually, the other day I was looking for a little bit of inspiration for something that I'm essentially rewriting. Uh So I went to the old copy of it that I wrote like five years ago. And I'm like, oh. Oh, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> oh, no wonder why that's in that folder. Yeah. But I don't throw anything out either. Right. I, I still have stuff from like middle school on my computer. Yeah. I mean, and someday, you know, if if you loved it enough to keep it or to even write it, there's something there. Someday you're going to grow as a writer and you're going to dig it out and dust it off and you're going to make it great and you're probably going to sell it. And that's that's the way I think about it. I'm probably someday going to be able to, to make it right, you know, and sellable and make it what I wanted it to be in the first place I still have that novel too that crap novel (laughs) it's huge it's like a big requirement for being a writer (laughs) yeah get one really bad one out of the way so that you can work on something else I don't know so how long have you been writing for? since 1992 wow yeah a long time (laughs) (laughs) How did you get started? In college. Um, I knew I wanted to be a writer. Actually, okay, that wasn't true. I just lied to you. I wrote songs. <laughs> I wrote songs when I was 14. And they were country western songs because I grew up in Cribble Creek and that's what my parents listened to, except for my dad would occasionally break into some uh you know, some, some Southern rock or something like that. But yeah, I wrote a bunch of country songs and I still have them. And yeah, that's something I'll just leave that alone. Um, serious writing though. I got started in college. Um, I won 
an award for an essay that I wrote. And then I won another award for another essay. And it kind of went on from there. And then I got into creative writing because that was in composition. And I got into creative writing. And um, that's when short stories started to happen. And in college, I was introduced to what a critique group is. And we tore each other up and it was merciless and I loved it. <laughs> and yeah, it just fed the monster, you know, and, and that's how I got started. And then... Um, in 2011 is when that first short story was picked up by Pillow Hill Press. And that's how I got started with selling things. Yeah, so you got started with short stories. Yes, yeah. anthologies. Nice, nice place to start. Yeah, <laughs> great place. <laughs> I just wrote a novel. Oh. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that's a hard place to start. Yeah, it so is. people make it work. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it gives you a good chance to work on your a lot of your writing and yeah. character development and mm -hmm. stuff on a smaller scale. And it's way easier to edit. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It doesn't take as long, for sure. <laughs> so how do you find out about these anthologies that you're writing for? Um, to start off with, I went to Dotrope Digest. How do you spell that? D-U-O-T-R-O-P-E. And I think there's Ness Digest. And I still get their newsletters. It's a huge database. And you have like, and say I just wrote a short story and I want to find a home for it. And um, I can go in there and you can actually narrow down word count, genre, and everything. Oh, wow. It's it's amazing. I highly suggest getting a membership there. And um, then if I'm invited to something, of course, that's different. I'll get an email or, or see somebody at a con, you know, and they'll, they'll be like, hey, um, I have this going on, you know. Kind of an invitation thing. I'm just looking at the website. That looks cool. It's, it's really cool. They, I'm sad cool. they went to a membership because it used to mm -hmm. be free. Oh. It did used to be free. Um, I am not a paid member. I still get their um, their emails though. You know, and they're pretty informative. Honestly, I am trying to finish three novels right now. Three three and a half novels, I guess. I'm I'm co-writing a novel with someone. So I have a lot of novels on my plate, and I promised myself that I will finish these novels before I write another short story. <laughs> so I haven't committed to another anthology because, I mean, they're almost done, but I have to get them done before I, you know, it's really easy for me to be, like, all excited about mm -hmm. a short story idea and get all excited about an anthology, and then, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, does... Writing for anthologies pay well, or? Um, typically not great, but it's not about what you get paid for writing for an anthology. It's about who you're in the table of contents with. Um, it's about a little bit of, you know, exploring your yourself as a writer, you know, and writing for maybe a, a genre that you're not comfortable with or something like that. It's it's really about growth. And um, in the beginning, it was about, you know, stepping stones and having something to put down on your resume or your query letter, you know. So, yeah, anthologies and short story sales, for me, it's not about getting paid. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you've gotten your name out there because of them. So. I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's hope. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Got any final questions? Or... I don't. Oh. <laughs> I find short stories really hard to write. Do you? Like, I rather write a novel oh, than a short yeah. story. But I'm like you, I when it comes to the first draft, I'd rather sit down and get it done, which is hard to do when you've got a toddler running around. Yep. But I'd rather sit down, get it all out, and then edit it before I send it off to betas. Yeah. What about the anthologies that you've been in? What have they been like? They've been okay. Um, I've been in two of the Penny Dread Tales, um, which was a chance for me to step out of my normal genre. They were both steampunk, and I had never written steampunk before, and it was a fun adventure. Um, my first anthology, which was with XOXO Publishing, which has since gone out of business, uh, was my first trip into paranormal romance, and that was my first publication. Um, and I was originally writing urban fantasy um, nothing that had been published and I was like well I'll give it a try because little voice in the back of my head is like sex sells <laughs> um, and so I gave it a try and found out that I loved it and uh, redeveloped what was one of my urban fantasy series into a paranormal romance um, and I was in one that was interesting because it had a theme um, but it was set the it was not just a general theme like the domesticated velociraptors but it was set at a book fest and you had to have a certain character make a cameo, and you had to follow the setting, uh, which was really interesting, a little bit challenging, um, but I really enjoyed that, and that one is 
is out. Um, that's something weird happened at the book fest. <laughs> um, and that's actually a Abby short story. So that one's urban fantasy. Um, but they've been uh, great for exposure. Um, yeah. I saw like 16 cents from my XOXO publishing one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, so I haven't, I haven't seen much pay wise, but yeah. it was definitely a, a networking thing, um, which yeah. is how I met a lot of the authors in Denver. Um, and actually how I got connected with Anomaly Con, um, cause I went up there cause they were, uh, releasing Penny Dread volume three at Anomaly Con. So I went up for that. Nice. Cool. And now you're the, one of the guests at and now, and now I have a table and do panels at AnomalyCon every year. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. So it's a gr- so basically, to sum it up, writing a short story is a good way to get started. It helps you meet our, other authors and get your name out there because you're with other authors and helps you to learn your craft better. So. Yeah. And don't forget, you can add that to your query letter mm-hmm. when you send off your novel and, and things in the future. I mean... They're, it's important. They want to know about your publications and even the smallest ones. I mean, I got $5 for my first short story sale, you know, but that goes on my query letter. <laughs> well, it used to be that in, in the older days, um, <laughs> it was the magazines that you submit yeah. it to. And now anthologies have kind of taken over that in terms of getting those publication credits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Midnight Writers Podcast. If you've enjoyed this content, sign up for our newsletter on our website, MidnightWritersSociety.com, where you'll get a lot more great information. See you next Wednesday.